We have four terminal windows here. The two terminals on left side are just a local computer. I'm currently using to record this video. The terminal on the bottom right is a remote computer. It is a server hosted on Amazon's EC2 service. The terminal on the top is a live network monitor, running on my router. Only UDP packets will be displayed on this window. The other traffic is filtered out and not displayed here. The router here is a workstation running Ubuntu. This kind of setup will be very useful if you want to study network programming. To start with we will require a server running on the local computer. We will use Netcat, the Swiss army knife of networking, here to get this done. We will get Netcat to listen on UDP port 12001 here. If you don't understand the command here, don't worry. You can easily Google to find out how something can be done using Netcat, when you require it. Next we need to know the public IP address of my local computer, so that we can send incoming packets to it, from the remote server. You can Google for my IP address to know your public IP. Here I'm using a public service that returns your IP address through HTTP. Quite useful if you want to use this in a shell script. Now is the time to see what happens when we send a UDP packet from the remote computer. Let's send out the packet with the payload UDP hole. And for this, we again turn to our handy tool, Netcat. We will send the packet from the source port 12002 to the local computer port 12001. Notice how simple this is, using Netcat. If you want to debug any network, Netcat will usually have an easy way to do it. Let's send the packet. But, where did it go? Our router isn't displaying the packet here. The local computer didn't receive it. Where did it go? Well, it got dropped by the NAT router, before it reached our network. The NAT router has no idea, where to send this packet to. There are many computers in its network running behind the same public IP address and it could be intended to any of those. So, it drops the packet, unable to decide what to do with it. Now we get to the clever trick part and it is surprisingly simple. We will be sending UDP packets from the local computer to the remote. For this we will be using a very simple but powerful tool, HPing. It's like the usual ping. But, allows you to send UDP and TCP packets too. We need to specify the source and destination ports right here. The packets we sent went fine through our router and right to the remote computer. This time, the router knows exactly where the packet is coming from and where to send it. It also keeps track of this connection in its NAT table, so reply packets from the remote computer can be sent to the right host. Now we are done creating the UDP hole. Let's see. Now. Incoming packets from the remote computer should come in just fine. Oops. It still isn't working and the packets are not coming across. This is a very common issue with UDP hole punching. This happens when another computer on the network is using the same incoming port. In this case, I've intentionally got another computer to use UDP port 12002. This scenario is called port collision and all programs must handle this. You will be amazed by how frequently port collisions happen. This is fixed by simply using another incoming port. Let's try using port 12003 now. Send the packet on the new port from the remote computer. And use HPing again to punch hole for the new port. This time when we send a UDP packet from the remote computer, we see UDP hole being printed on the Netcat server on our local computer. The router also reports incoming packets from the remote computer. This time, we have successfully created a UDP hole. The remote computer can now send UDP packets to the local computer behind a NAT router. This UDP hole will be open, as long as it's being used. 